How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Views. In today's video, we're going to dive straight into a detailed look of how to use processes within Simplify 3D. So if you use Simplify 3D, you might have noticed that it actually has a fairly different approach to many other slices on the market that makes it very powerful, but at the same time, it can be a little bit daunting to use. We're gonna look at how to choose the right process for your 3D printer, as well as how to use multiple processes within the same print, which can be a really powerful feature. So without further ado, let's get started. Ah, welcome back guys. So here we have Simplify 3D, but it's in a way you might not have seen it before. If you look down in the left corner, there's no process. And Simplify 3D is unique within other slicing programs in that it is process driven. You don't just hit prepare to print or slice. And it's this approach that makes Simplify 3D a bit more like a traditional CAM program where you'd be CNC machining something and you'd have a process for doing a hole, process for doing a face, process for doing an outside pocket, whatever, something like that. Simplify 3D has actually got more in common with that than some of the more simple slicing programs out there, which is actually pretty cool. Anyway, so when you fire up Simplify 3D for the first time, it's gonna to wanna to walk you through the configuration assistance. Let's go through that under the help menu. So if you've just bought a 3D printer and it's, it's compatible with Simplify 3D, you're gonna have this option here, introduction. And the cool thing is that the guys at Simplify 3D are just adding new profiles all the time, like constantly. And it's these profiles that you want to choose specifically for your 3D printer. Now, to be fair, there is more 3D printers out in the market all the time than Simplify 3D can keep up with, but we're gonna go into that sort of thing later in the video. But for now, I'm gonna be printing on my Cocoon Create, which is a Wanhao i3, so let's scroll down the list. Down, 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 down. Starts with W. So we've got Wanhao, Duplicator 4, Duplicator 6, and Wanhao i3. Next, and finish. So you notice the bed will now scale and adjust, and also it adjusts the zero point in the bed. Some machines have zero points in the middle, some machines have a diff different corners. Here on the one how it's at zero, 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 right in the bottom left corner. So here I've got a maker coin for the demonstration. It is a little bit small, so I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. Let's make it 300%. And we can go into our processes. So you notice when we did that configuration assistant, we now have one process. Let's double click that and learn a little bit more. So there's two ways to use processes in Simplify 3D. There's the sort of beginner's approach and there's the advanced menu. And here I've got it restricted down to a beginner's approach. So this is where you change simple things without worrying about stuffing up your print, I suppose. So here you can change infill percentages with a slider. You can change what material preset you want. And you can also pre-configure for different print quality settings, which will change print speeds, lots of other settings, and also layer heights. But we are not beginners here, we're gonna delve into the advanced settings. So let's click show advanced. Oh yeah. So within the advanced menu, you can change pretty much everything. We can change our nozzle diameter if you've changed your nozzle size. You can change your extrusion multiplier if you're finding your printer is under or over extruding. And you can also change your retraction if you're finding your printer is uh, leaving stringing between different areas of the print. Various different settings. You can also change layers, which is great for fine tuning how how high the quality of your print you want it to be, and also how long you want the print to take. Obviously, coarser layers are quicker, but they don't look as nice. Additions, including a raft, which is handy to stick things down to the bed if they're a weird shape and they won't stick otherwise to a bed printing raftless. Infill settings, as I've explained in previous videos. Support, likewise, as I've explained in previous videos. And temperature, if you want to fine tune your temperatures. There's also other various settings, such as when your fan turns on, you can set different G-code presets. You can even set scripts. For example, here in the preset for the Wanhao i3, it's running G28, which is making the machine home itself before the print. Because some machines will home when they initialize. In this case, the Wanhao homes before each print. You can also make the machine lower the bed once the print's complete by using end G-code, where you can add it here. So for example, you can see here, it's turning off the motors and it's turning off the bed and extruders. And of course you can change all the different printing speeds and parameters there. And you can also change various other advanced features which we're going to go to in a second. Right, so if you're still with me, congratulations, let's continue. Let's click prepare to print. So they're just the default settings within Simplify 3D. I've left them as is because I'm not really interested in tweaking them right now. So you can see here, build time four hours and four minutes, which is not too bad. It's got no support material and it's got a fairly dense infill. Right, so this is where Simplify 3D comes into its own. 
we're going to create a second process. I'm going to take this process and then literally you can do control C and control V. Copy, paste. But you might be asking yourself, why would you possibly want multiple processes for the same object? In a previous video, I did multiple processes for different infill settings on individual cubes. Each cube had a different process assigned to it, which is great. But in this case, why would I want multiple processes for the single object? Doesn't make sense. Well, there is a few cases where you can use multiple processes to do some really cool things within Simplify 3D on the single object. And one of those is being able to start and stop at a certain layer height. So let's explore that. Let's go to process one. And let's go to the advanced tab. So under the advanced tab, we can start the print at a height and stop print at another height. But you also might be wondering, well, I don't know how high I want to go. Well, luckily Simplify 3D has a tool for that. So let's go into view and cross section. Here we go, pretty handy. So we can go on any axis, but we want the Z for this. So it starts at zero and the print goes all the way up to 30 by the looks of it. So we can say, okay, we want the print to continue as normal up to maybe just before it starts doing that infill area bit there. You yeah, know, where it's sort of uh, filling in quite drastically there. So we'll, we'll continue up to maybe 15. So we'll go up to 15 and the rest will be different. So let's go to process, advanced, and start printing at zero, stop printing at 15. Alrighty, and with our second process, it's imperative, very important, that we change it from start printing at zero to start printing at 15 and then let it continue on. If you do create multiple processes that do overlap within Simplify 3D and try to print with them, Simplify 3D will actually throw an error up saying that the selected processes currently overlap while printing the same model and you might be printing the same region twice. So while it is possible to make a mess out of your file by printing in the same region more than once, Simplify 3D will go out of its way to try to help you stop doing that. All right, so now we've got our first process, but why would we want a second process? Well, this coin, as you saw in the preview, has that sort of very steep overhang that starts to form in the middle. So I want to print it initially with a very sparse infill then I want to assign the second process with a denser infill that will support that overhang much better. Makes sense, let's try it. So let's go into, for our process one, let's call it low infill. And let's go into our infill settings and let's make it like five, really quite low, rectilinear. And let's have a look at that. Let's see what it's gonna look like. Select all, again, preview, doesn't cost you anything, lets you test ideas. Right, so that's a nice low infill. It's building up and then it starts building that. But do we really need that infill there? That fill that is between the two? Not really, let's get rid of that. So let's go back and for low infill, under layer, top solid layers, zero. We don't need any of those, alrighty. And the second one, let's call this higher infill. Infill of 20. That will probably do for now. And here, bottom solid layers, zero. So when they meet, there'll just be no solid layers. They'll just continue infill onto infill. Pretty cool. So let's go okay there. And prepare to print. Select all. All right, so now you can see as it starts building up, it's gonna get to that other infill and magically start doing this. So you see, it just lays across it nicely. Beauty. And we can change a few other things as well. So let's go to low infill where we were before, under infill settings, and we can add different infill offsets. So if you want those infills to change offset, for example, for whatever reason, we can do that too. So let's make it, for example, let's make it zero and 90. All right, prepare to print. So now instead of lining up perfectly with the second infill, they're gonna be offset by 45 degrees. Like this. So now it's 90 and zero, and then the second one comes in diagonally across it and fills in. So the really, the really powerful thing is you can see right here, okay? So we've got the infill, we've got that one piece there, and then we've got more infill around it to start supporting that overhang. So you see there, if it was just the, the low infill, it would probably droop quite a lot. But now I've got infill supporting it, 
It'll all come together beautifully. So why would you bother doing this? Well, let's have a look. Three hours and 20 minutes. So we've shaved, what, 40 minutes off our print time by doing this? And if you have a huge printer, like a G-Max or a massive machine, you can shave hours off your print time by cleverly changing where you want that infill. And some objects are difficult to print. By all means, you might need to change your infill multiple times throughout a print, but you can do that with this. There's no limit really of how, actually, don't, is there a limit? Let's have a look. Let's add a process. Right. So I don't think there's any limit on how many processes you can have. I just created a hundred and it didn't seem to care. So that's going to do it for this part of the video, guys. But the next part, we want to look at processes themselves and how to create a custom one for your 3D printer. Let's get into that. So let's say your printer isn't in this list. You've gone through and there's no printer there. Well, that's okay. We're going to select other instead. And if you have a printer that's able to support other G code, so it's not proprietary, then you can probably make Simplify 3D run it. For example, machines like the UPS, they're completely proprietary and you can't run them off Simplify 3D, sadly. But most machines coming out of China, and in this case, I'm gonna set it up for the Kidi X1, which is not in this list. We're going to be able to set it up and run it, no problem. So, other and next. So we're gonna call it a name. So we're gonna call it the, the Kidi Tech X1. X1. And it does come down to a bit of trial and error. I don't know what the board rate would be, but I'm not gonna, I'm planning to run this tethered. I'm gonna run it by SD, so I don't really care about that. What type of machine is it? Is it a Delta? That's important. Or is it a Cartesian with a sort of square build volume, cube build volume? And that's the build volume here. So the KDX one is 150. So it's 150, 150, and also 150 high. Nozzle diameter is 0.4 and it is also 1.75 filament diameter. Number of extruders is one and it does have a heated bed, so tick that box. Next, that's pretty much it. So that's our bare bone profile created. Finish. See, it's a fair bit smaller than our uh, one how, but would still print that coin. Okay, so we have a process now for the Kidi X1. This is where fine tuning comes into play. So what Simplify 3D has done is made defaults for everything, but the printer might need tweaks. So for example, extrusion multiplier, it might want 0.95, for example. It might need a different ooze, uh, ooze control system. So it might need different retraction, or it might need it to coast at the end where it sort of stops extruding just before the end. This is your job. So if you have a new printer and it doesn't have a profile, basically go through the steps, Create one and then with this default, you can then start to fine tune it. The only thing I will warn you on is homing position. Some machines do home at the bottom corner, zero, 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 but some machines do home to the center. And that is important to note. So I'll show you how to change that now. So to change those fine details, you need to go to tools and options. So under options, you have machine, and this is where you can change those sort of details. So you have the build volume, yes, but then we have origin offset, and this is important. As I said, if the origin isn't in the corner, it's someone else somewhere else, which can happen sometimes. You need to offset it so Simplify 3D knows where to place those files within space. So if you try 000, which is a good default for most machines, and it doesn't work, then you might need to go back to the drawing board. And a good example of ones that don't have 000 would be the FlashForge Finder. So let's, uh, let's say we're gonna print on the FlashForge Finder. Here we go, FlashForge Finder. See what's happened there? So this is the 000 point, the homing point, but it's not in the corner, it's in the middle for some reason. So it's thrown it all off. So that's a good example of why you need to sort of check this thing. Now, naturally, a printer should not damage itself. It should have software limits that stop it going outside of its homing position. And you'll know it's doing that is if you do a circle, it'll sort of become a square. It'll hit those, those software limits and just square itself off. Hopefully, there is some cases where machines will not have software limits and you will have it just going outside of home stupidly. But most cases you should be safe, but always try to find this out on a forum or from the manufacturer. But as I said, 000 in the corner, bottom left, is usually where it should be. So you don't need to offset it. But here in the FlashForge Finder, it is offset for some reason. 
and you can see that under the options menu machine it's offset to 7070 which is in the middle of the the bed basically so thanks for watching guys hope you found this tutorial on how to use processors within simplify 3d useful i certainly enjoyed using it and i certainly enjoyed finding out that you can make more than a hundred processors within simplify 3d that might be a topic for a future video if you found this video useful guys don't forget to subscribe it helps me out a huge amount i really do appreciate it and i'll see you again very shortly here on makers muse catch you later